Okay, so I would like to first thank the organizer for this, um, this opportunity. Okay, um, so in this talk, I uh, would like to discuss a certain uh, formulation of cyber wit and theory. Can you hear me? Or it's still better? Okay, so I would like to discuss a formulation of cyber wit and theory in terms of uh, an ideal Fermi gas. So in the, first ta uh, in the first part of the talk, I will need to review some background, and this is going to be based on this work, which I did in collaboration with uh, Marcos Marinho and Yasuyuki Atsuda. And then in the second part, I will um, present more in detail this formulation of cyber wit and theory. And this is based on a work which I did uh, with uh, Giulio Bonelli and uh, Alessandro Tanzini. Okay, now uh, from like a more <coughs> generic point of view, in this talk we are interested in dualities, and in particular in dualities which relate um, on one side something like geometry, string theory, and gravity, and uh, on the other side we have like operator theory, matrix model, or quantum mechanics. So we have like two uh, quite different theory which are related by means of, this, uh, of these dualities. And now, in this talk, I'm not going to discuss in detail like, um, general property of dualities, but I will more focus on uh, some concrete example. And an example that maybe you are familiar with it is uh, um, Witten conjecture. Okay. So this conjecture relates on one side uh, topological gravity in two dimensions, which is related to uh, intersection theory in model space. And on the other side, you have a minimal model which are uh, related to matrix model. And an important characteristic in this conjecture is that basically the main object that characterizes this theory and also this theory, they both satisfy the same Pan-Levé equation, which is, for instance, uh, Pan-Levé 1 equation. Okay. So this is just an example, and I'm not going to look at this example in detail in this talk. But the duality that I would like to discuss actually share many characteristics with this uh, example here. Okay, um, okay now uh, before going into like real uh, and concrete example, there is one more uh, point that I would like to stress is, is that um, this, uh, this string duality actually are uh, quite important and uh, here we have two reasons of why they are important. So the first point is that uh, they give us some new results, a new conjecture in mathematics, which relates some very different object. And without using like the physical intuition, which comes from this uh, duality, it would be very hard to see this kind of connection. For instance, we have seen Witten conjecture, which relate uh, intersection theory and matrix model. And maybe you are also familiar with the Gopakumabafa conjecture, which relates enumerative geometry on the resolved conifold and not theory on the sphere. Now, from a more physical point of view, uh, these dualities are important because they uh, allowed you to give some non perturbative definition of some uh, maybe relatively complicated theory like string theory in terms of a simpler theory, which can be a quantum mechanical theory or a CFT. And a very famous example in uh, physics is the uh, ADS-CFT duality, where you can give a non-perturbative definition of some uh, string theory, of, of some observable in string theory, in terms of observable in a dual conformal field theory. And then here is much easier to provide a non-perturbative definition, because you have te technique like localization and so on that can give you um, an exact uh, answer in terms, for instance, of uh, matrix model. Okay. So uh, the duality I would like to discuss here is um, what is called the topological string spectral theory duality, and is the one that uh, Marcos has already introduced a bit this morning. So in this duality, um, on one side you have topological string theory on a certain uh, type of manifold, which is a toric Calabiao, and its, you know, its uh, mathematical counterpart is like enumerative geometry. 
And then on the other side, you have uh, quantum mechanics, and in particular, uh, an ideal Fermi gas. And this corresponds to operator or uh, spectral theory. Okay, so roughly speaking, this is uh, the plan of the talk. Okay, I will start by reviewing some aspect of this duality that I will need later. But then I will focus on a particular limit in the, of this duality where uh, things simplify in a certain uh, sense. And then you obtain a new duality which relates cyber witten theory in four dimension. And on the other side, you have again an another ideal uh, Fermi gas in an external uh, potential. And what is nice about this, uh, this level here is that actually you can prove this uh, duality because the main object that characterizes this theory and this theory, they both satisfy the same uh, differential equation, which is a, a pan levy equation. And to show that in this side, we have to use some uh, recently, recent work by Elisavi and collaborator, also Misha, which gave a talk just before. And on the other side, instead, we had to use some a little bit more, more older results by uh, Zamologikov and um, other people. Okay, so um, I can start by reviewing a little bit some aspect of this duality. So as I was saying, on one side, we have a topological string theory. So this is a theory which um, studies some maps that goes from a Riemann surface of genus G into a certain uh, target space. Now, in this talk, I will always focus on the case in which the target space is a Calabria manifold, which is called uh, local P1 times C1. Okay. So this is uh, constructed by taking two copies of P1 and then you put a bundle. Okay. And uh, physically, these, uh, these maps, they describe the trajectory of your string into, in the background geometry. And at the perturbative level, as Marcus was mentioning in the morning, this theory is characterized by what are called the genus G free energy, which are this quantity here. So T is like a geometrical parameter, which is related to the, um, to the size of this background geometry. And this, uh, this genus G free energy basically, basically counts in some sense the number of this, this uh, type of maps. And then uh, what you do usually is that you organize this uh, genus G free energy into a common generating functional, which is called the Gopakumavafa free energy. And it's this object here. Okay, so GS is what is uh, called the string coupling. It, um, it gives the strength of the interaction in, of the string in space time. Okay, then you have the sum. This here are uh, numbers, they are called the Gopakuma Waffa invariant, and they are uh, related to the counting of these maps. And then you have uh, this uh, piece here, and here you have e to the Keller uh, parameter. Now, as uh, Clem was also mentioning yesterday, so if you take, for instance, um, g equals zero, here you have one over sine uh, square. Okay, so every time this is like a multiple of pi, you get a pole. And here, like you do, you have a summation, so you have a dense set of poles along the real axis. Okay, so this function is somehow problematic when you restrict yourself to the, to the real axis. So what you can actually do is that you combine this quantity with something else in such a way that at the end, all these poles cancel and you end up with a quantity, that is what we call uh, the grand potential, uh, which is, okay, it's defined in this way, so you take this and then you add some extra piece. And this uh, summation is done in such a way that at the end, this is going to be, this grand potential here is going to be uh, well defined for every value of the, of the coupling. And this extra piece also is, um, is also a known quantity, okay? It's called the nekrasov shatashvili free energy. It's something that uh, people know how to compute if you work in topological string. And it also has an explicit expression in terms of some invariant that characterize the underlying um, geometry. Now, I'm not going to give you all the details because just we don't need them. Just remember that we have a new quantity, which is the grand potential, and this is defined for every value of the coupling, and we can really write down um, 
an explicit expression for this quantity in terms of enumerative invariant. Oops. Okay, and then um, what we do is that we take this grand potential, so this depends on two parameters. One is the string coupling, and the other one is this parameter mu, which is related to kappa in this uh, way here. And this is like a geometrical parameter, which is related to the, uh, is basically the complex moduli of the, associated with the underlying geometry. And then what you do is, okay, you take this grand potential, you shift by two pi i, and then you sum over all the shift. So in this way, you obtain an object, which we call the grand canonical partition function of topological string. And this object is manifestly invariant under a shift of mu by uh, 2 pi i. Okay. And, okay, so this is a, an important quantity, and uh, so remember that because they will come back uh, later in the talk. Okay. So now if we um, go to the other side of the duality, Okay, the underlying physical theory here is an ideal Fermi gas in an external potential. Now, when you have uh, this kind of uh, gas, everything is determined when you have the density matrix. So according to this, uh, to this duality, the density matrix that um, characterizes the gas which is dual to topological string on local P1 times T1, is the one whose density matrix is constructed by quantizing the mirror curve, as Marcos was mentioning this morning. So in the case of this geometry, the local P1 times T1 that I was mentioning before, the, um, the operator that you get is this one here. Okay, so M is a parameter. We, will, we are going to take this uh, positive, okay? And yeah, okay, so basically this is the density which describes the Fermi gas which is dual to uh, topological string on local P1 times P1 according to our duality. So this has a discrete spectrum, is, uh, the row is a trace class operator and it's precisely the kind of operator that Marcos was mentioning this morning. And then uh, what you do is that basically you define the grand canonical partition function of this operator in this way, okay, so this is what you do when you study uh, Fermi gas in uh, statistical mechanics. Okay? So it's the determinant of one plus kappa rho. Kappa plays the role of the fugacity of your gas. And then this, you can write it as a product over all the energy levels. So e, e to the en is the, um, is the eigenvalue of this operator. And then if you do a uh, expansion around the small value of the fugacity, the coefficient are, uh, correspond to what is called the canonical partition function of your gas. Okay. And one more comment that I uh, will need later um, is that if you have an explicit expression for this uh, spectral determinant, okay, then you can compute the, the spectrum of this operator simply by looking at the vanishing locus. Because this vanish precisely when kappa is uh, is given by the energy uh, level. Okay, so um, okay, so now that we have seen the two sides of the duality, basically this is like the global picture. We have um, topological string theory on this geometry, and the topological string partition function compute the numerative invariant for this uh, geometry here, and then there is mirror symmetry, which basically relate this geometry to this geometry here. And this is described by this curve here. And then you can quantize this curve by promoting x and p to some operator that fulfill the commutation relation. And then you get this operator, and you think of this operator as the density matrix of an ideal Fermi gas. And then what this, uh, this duality is telling you, basically, is that this theory and this theory are really uh, closely, closely related. Okay, so this is just like at the level of a picture, okay, but actually you can make all this uh, very precise and you can make like very precise uh, statement for this, uh, for this identification. Okay, and
So um, this uh, this duality can be uh, summarized in two uh, precise statements. One is the statement about the grand canonical partition function, and the other one is a statement about the canonical partition function. Okay, just to sum summarize a bit. So at the level of the grand canonical partition function, the conjecture, the duality, okay, can be encoded in this uh, conjecture here. Okay. So on this side, you have the grand canonical partition function of topological string. And in this side here, you have uh, the spectral determinant of your gas. So here, mu is like a geometrical parameter that is related to the complex moduli, as I was saying. And in this side, instead, is we play the role of the chemical potential. And then the string coupling constant is related to the inverse of the Planck constant in the gas. So in that sense, this gives you uh, uh, an exact relation between enumerative geometry on this side, because this computes the enumerative invariant of the background geometry, and a spectral theory, because basically this is what contains the spectral information on this operator here. So in that sense, uh, this, this duality gives you a new family of exactable, exactly solvable problem in spectral theory. So a new family of operator for which you can like write down an exact close expression for the quantization condition which and the spectral determinant also that determine the like the spectrum of this operator and okay so here we have a concrete example okay so this is the operator that you get when you quantize the mirror curve to local p1 times p1 if you choose the commutation relation in this way so h bar is equal to 2 pi then you know that the spectrum of this operator okay, is given by the vanishing locus of the spectral determinant. Now, without using our conjecture, you, you are not really able to compute that uh, in, in very in close form. Okay. But because of our conjecture, you know that this is equivalent to the vanishing locus of this, uh, uh, this function here. And this, you can really compute in close, in exactly and in close form, because this you can compute thanks to the connection with topological string. And in this particular case, actually this is given by a theta function. And the zero of theta function are given by this expression here. Okay, so e to the energy are the eigenvalue of this operator. And this is what determine uh, the energy level. So n equals zero, if you solve this equation for the energy, give you the first energy level, n equal one, the second, and so on. And usually it's very rare, rare to have uh, this kind of uh, closed form expression for the quantization condition. Also in like standard quantum mechanics. Like you have the harmonic oscillator, you can do this, but you don't have mm, a lot of other examples in which you can do something like this. But now with this construction, we have all these operators that come by quantizing the mirror curve for which you can, do, uh, you can do these kind of things. So in that sense, we have a new family of exactly solvable problem in uh, spectral theory. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the second statement is about the canonical uh, partition function. And this is something that Marcos also discussed this morning, so I will just review that quickly. So the uh, partition function of uh, topological string is given by this expression. So this, so this is the grand potential that I was introducing uh, before. This is like the airy contour. And the conjecture state that this is equal to the canonical partition function of the gas. So in that sense, we give a new meaning to the partition function of topological string from the point of view of operator theory. And this is that these basically are just a combination of spectral traces. And in, that, in this way, as uh, Marcus was saying this morning, you have a non-perturbative definition of some topological string on toric background in terms of uh, operator theory or matrix model, because this you can write uh, explicitly in terms of uh, matrix model. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, um, also an important point of this, uh, of this construction and this uh, conjecture 
is that actually is testable. Okay, you have seen some tests this morning. So there are uh, by now several tests and also application and generalization which have been done. And all the time this test and application and so on, they all uh, strongly support this conjecture. Okay, but yeah, we still don't have a proof of the conjecture. And uh, in the rest of the talk, I will focus on a certain limited case of this duality in which uh, things simplify in such a way that uh, actually we can prove that, uh, that duality. Okay, so the um, limiting case that I would like to study is the one that you uh, obtain by doing the geometric engineering. Okay. So it's known since a while now that um, if you take topological string on certain type of, uh, of manifold, like local P1 times T1, and then you take a certain uh, geometric limit, you end up with a supersymmetric gauge theory in four dimensions. Now, in the particular case of local P1 times P1, what you do when you take this limit is that like, you blow one of the, of the CP1 and you shrink the other, and you do this in a, in a precise way. Okay. And then you obtain a cyber Witten theory in uh, SU2 cyber Witten theory in uh, four dimension. Now, this work for uh, topological string but also work for what is called a refinement of topological string. Okay, again, I'm not going to go in the detail of this refinement. The only thing is that I want to, I want to say about it is that basically you can um, deform topological string by adding an additional uh, coupling. So you end up with a theory which has two coupling that typically are called epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. And in some limit, in particular, when you put these two to be equal, you, end, you recover uh, the standard topological string. Okay. And in this geometric and general limit, this gives um, cyber Witten theory in, in what is called the four-dimensional omega background, which is characterized by these two parameters, which are like twisting parameters of the, of the background. And in that limit, the full partition function of topological string and the refined version of topological string give you the necklace of partition function in four dimensions, which compute the partition function of this theory here. So this is a well-known uh, object which has been uh, computed in, in detail. Good. Okay, now um, I would like to see what happened to this uh, topological string spectral theory duality when you take this, uh, this particular limit. Now, if you take the limit in the standard way, so you scale this parameter as is typically done in the geometric engineering limit, you recover an another uh, well-known conjecture, which is the of shatashvili conjecture in four dimensions, okay? So this conjecture tells you that the spectrum of this operator Okay, this operator is what is called the Hamiltonian of, quantum, of a system <coughs> which is called quantum toda. So the conjecture tells you that the spectrum of this operator is computed by using a cyber Witten theory in a background where one of the two parameters is set to zero. Okay. And, okay, so if you do the standard story, this is what you, what you end up with. Now you can, like, slightly rescale the parameter which enter in this geometric engineering, and I will explain in a moment what I mean by this. And if you do this, then you end up with a new uh, formulation of sabir witten theory in terms of uh, an ideal Fermi gas. Okay. And in this limit, basically, uh, you can show that the, spec the operator that appears is this one, and you can show that the spectrum of this operator is uh, computed by using a class of partition function in a particular omega background, which is called self-dual omega background, where these two parameters are equal. Okay. And what is nice, as I will explain later, is actually it's not the first time that this operator appeared. And it appeared before, for instance, in the study of um, easing model and uh, self-avoiding polymer. But okay, I will, I will get to that later. And also what is important is that in this uh, in this study here, we have a relation with Pineleve equation, 
which allowed us to prove the conjecture. So we can prove that the spectrum of this operator is computed by the Nekras of uh, partition function. Oops. Okay. Now, um, if we think in terms of topological string, okay, the reason of having two different limits is related to the fact that the grand potential, as I was mentioning at the beginning, is composed by two pieces. Okay. So if you take the standard geometric engineering limit, what you do is that you send one of the parameters to infinity, the other to zero, and h bar, which is the coupling, also to zero. And in this, if you, if you take the topological string uh, spectral duality and you do this limit, then you end up with the necklace of Shatashvili conjecture. But then what you can also do is like rescale a bit the parameter and take the, the basis and the fiber over h bar to one infinity, one zero, and h bar to infinity. So in this limit, this still goes to infinity, but this is like kept fixed, okay? And then if you apply this limit to the, uh, to the duality, you end up with this uh, Fermi gas formulation and you can relate to uh, Pan-Levé equation. Okay, so this is like, like to explain these two uh, different limits from a five-dimensional uh, point of view. But actually, you can also understand these uh, two limits directly from a, a four-dimensional point of view, because somehow you can understand them as implementing a different quantization scheme in a four dimension. So let's suppose that you have this uh, Hamiltonian, this classical Hamiltonian. So this is the kinetic term, and then you have a potential. Then like the standard approach to quantization in some sense, what you do is you take x and p to be some operator, and this to be the quantum uh, Hamiltonian. Okay. But there is also an another approach that uh, people have been used, and it's what is called the Wigner approach to quantization. So in that sense, this is the classical Hamiltonian, and the quantum Hamiltonian is defined by defining the density matrix in this way here. Okay. So this is uh, an operator, an operator, and again an operator, which is like the potential. And then if you do this, the Hamiltonian that you obtain is basically this Hamiltonian here, and on the top of that you have some h-bar corre correction. Okay. So um, if we now uh, think at our two limit, okay, we can start with like the uh, cyber witten curve, which is just is this curve here, okay? And then basically this, you can think of this as the classical Hamiltonian of the uh, quantum Toda, which is the system that underlines the necklace of uh, Shatashvili conjecture. And then you apply like the standard approach to quantization, and you end up with this operator, the Hamiltonian of quantum Toda, that appear in the standard necklace of Shatashvili uh, uh, conjecture. But then you can also like do a change of variable, okay? And this is what you obtain. And this actually, as we will see later, is the classical Hamiltonian that underline um, the, which describe the Fermi gas uh, formulation of cyber witten theory. And then if you take this and you apply the Wigner approach to quantization, which is the second approach that I was mentioning before, then you obtain uh, the density matrix for the uh, cyber witten gas, which is the, the operator that was appearing in the other uh, limit. Okay, so this is just to motivate that from a pure four-dimensional point of view without using the, uh, the limit. Okay, now I would like to see more concretely what are the quantities that appear when you take this, um, this limit. So in the, we start with the topological string side, which goes down to the cyber witten side by using this geometric engineering. So in fa in, at the level of topological string, this is the object that we have. And then when we implement this limit, actually we end up with this object here, which is a known object that is called the necklace of Okunkov partition function in, uh, in four dimensions. So this is defined from the Nekrasov partition function, which is uh, the one that compute the partition function of uh, cyber witten theory 
in this case in what is called the self-dual omega background. And this depends on two parameters. One which is more like a geometrical parameter, this kappa, which is related to A. A is the, the cyber width and period of the curve. And, and then you have the other, and another parameter, this T, which is uh, related to the instant on counting parameter, which is like the gauge coupling. And this epsilon here is the parameter which characterizes the omega background, because we are in a situation where the two epsilon are equal. Okay. And then the necklace of Okunkov partition function is obtained by shifting this parameter and by summing over all shift. Okay. So this is an object which uh, was already known. And it, when you take this particular limit, you recover this object here. Sorry, here. No, this is uh, everything I'm going to discuss is this uh, is this risk scale limit. Okay, if you if you compute the standard limit, you end up with uh, Toda quantum Toda and this part here. So what I'm going to discuss is this limit all the time, which is not that different. I mean, at the end, it's geometric engineering, but it's just that you have a sm you have to small rescale a bit the parameter because here the parameters that appear here are rescaled, okay, so. Ah, um, okay, so this is uh, in one side, we obtain this necklace of a Konkov partition function for SU2, uh, SU2 gauge theory. And if instead, oops, if instead we go on the other side, after we perform this uh, four-dimensional limit, okay, we obtain an another Fermi gas, which this time is described by this density matrix here. Okay. So this is like a non-standard kinetic term, and this is like the external potential. So we have again an ideal Fermi gas in an external potential. This is again a trace class operator. It has a discrete spectrum, so it, everything is, uh, is well defined. Now, if we want to maybe get like a feeling of what this gas is like, we can look at the classical Hamiltonian. Okay, so this is like the kinetic term, and then you have the external potential. And at large energy, this is what you obtain. So large energy means large P and large X. So we just have like a relatively simple, uh, ultra-relativistic ultra uh, gas in an external potential. Now, if you are familiar with ABGM theory, actually this gas is very similar, very, very similar to the gas of ABGM theory. Basically, the only difference in ABGM is that instead of Cauch, you have log Cauch. Okay. And this, uh, this uh, parallelism actually was the reason why uh, some time ago, together with Marcos, we studied this, uh, this kind of operator. But what we didn't know at that time is that actually this give you a description of cyber width and theory. Okay. And this is basically what this, uh, what the topological string spectral theory duality tell you in four dimension. So it tell you that the cyber width and theory in this self-dual omega background admit a dual description as an ideal Fermi gas. Okay. And in particular, the necklace of Okunkov partition function is identified with the spectral determinant of this, uh, of this gas. So again, here we have like kappa is a geometrical parameter. It's in this side, instead, is like the chemical potential of the gas. And uh, T, instead, is related to the instanton counting parameter or the gauge coupling. And here, instead, give you the strength of the, uh, of the external potential. Now, uh, more precisely, as I was mentioning, it's, it, this tells you that the spectrum of this operator is computed by the necklace of Okunkov partition function in this particular uh, background. And actually, we can prove it. And we can prove it because we can show that this object and this object, um, they both satisfy the same Pan-Levy equation, which is a Pan-Levy three equation. And they have the same asymptotic. So in this side, you have to use uh, some relatively uh, recent result, as I was showing you at the beginning. And in this side, instead, to show that this satisfies this Pine-Levy equation, there are uh, some slightly more older, uh, older results. 
Okay. So, more uh, specifically, the uh, necklace of Okunko partition function or uh, the spectral determinant compute what is called the tau function of uh, pan levetri equation that uh, Misha was mentioning just before. Okay. So here we, you can, there is a plot of this. Uh, ah, okay. So there are two parameters first. The, the t, which is like the instant on counting in gauge theory, um, correspond to the time of this equation, and kappa instead is related to the uh, initial condition. Okay. So this is, is, the, is the tau function of the pan levetri equation. And the zero of this tau function okay, give you the uh, spectrum of this, of this uh, operator here. And this equality, uh, as I said before, Sorry, is related to the A period. Okay, so kappa is uh, this. Um, so is A over epsilon. Both parameters are scale. Okay. Now, um, so far, uh, we have focused on this uh, necklace of Okunkov partition function, which corresponds to the, the canonical partition function of the gas. Okay, you have this uh, spectral determinant. Now, what I would like to do next is to look at the canonical partition function which correspond to the necklace of partition function directly. Okay. So if we take this uh, Fermi gas uh, point of view, once you have the density matrix, okay, you compute the canonical partition function in this way here. So you have to sum over all permutation. And then you can use an identity, which is called the Cauchy identity, to rewrite this sum of the permutation in terms of a matrix model. And this is what you obtain. So this is a particular case of an O2 matrix model, which were studied by Kostov and uh, also other people. And it's characterized by this interaction term here. And in this particular case, this is the potential that characterizes this O2 matrix model. And this is a like, relatively known uh, matrix model because it appeared before in the literature, for instance, in the study of two-dimensional uh, easing model, okay. and also in the study of non-contractible polymer uh, on a cylinder. So in that sense, with this, uh, this uh, four-dimensional duality, we give one another meaning to this uh, matrix model, which is the fact that it computes the necklace of uh, partition function. Because uh, on the cyber witten side, the canonical partition function actually corresponds to the uh, canonical partition function in what is called the uh, magnetic frame. And what this uh, duality is telling you is that this matrix model is a compact way to write this uh, canonical partition function. And, oops. Okay. So in particular, for instance, the perturbative cyber with an expansion of the necklace of partition function uh, coincide with the Toft expansion of the matrix model. So we have a matrix model here. Okay. It depends on two parameters, n and t. And the Toft expansion of the matrix model is defined by taking n and t large. But at the same time, this ratio n over t is fixed. And if you study the matrix model in this regime, you can show that it has this kind of uh, expansion here, where these are called the uh, genus G free energy of the matrix model. And there are some techniques directly in matrix model which allow you to compute this uh, perturbative expansion, this genus G-free energy. This is relatively hard, but this was done by, uh, by some people. And then on the other side, we have uh, the perturbative expansion of cyber witten So you can show that the necklace of partition function has a perturbative expansion of this uh, type here, where this quantity here, which are called the genus expansion, can be computed in, um, in a relatively uh, fast way by using the um, holomorphic anomaly equation. And you can get like, a, you can compute this up to like very high genus in a relatively 
small amount of time. And then what we found, basically, with this construction is that these two uh, coincide. And the dual period of the cyber witten theory is identified with the Toft coupling in the uh, matrix model. Okay. Mm. Okay, now um, there is one more comment that I uh, would like to make. And it's okay, so this, um, this matrix model here, okay, you can evaluate this uh, matrix exactly. Matrix model. So if you take n equal 1, for instance, this is just like a simple, uh, relatively simpler integral, and is given in terms of a Bessel function. Okay, so when n is equal 1, is, this is not very complicated. Okay. But actually, you can also get exact expression for higher value of, of n. And this is because there is an underlying TBA uh, system of equation, which allowed you to compute, in principle, this uh, matrix model exactly uh, n by n. Okay. So in and this means that actually it's possible to evaluate the full necros of partition function in the magnetic frame exactly uh, by using this uh, TBA technique, and not just as an instant on expansion. Okay. Okay. And, okay, now I just, I would like to discuss a little bit more uh, this relation with uh, Pan-Levé equation. So in this talk, basically I focus all the time on this local P1 times P1 geometry, and when we take this, uh, this limit, we recover uh, the Pan-Levé tree equation. Okay, but actually you can do the same also for other toric Calabiao, and in that case you recover a different type of uh, Pan-Levé equation. So on that side, basically by computing this limit, you can reproduce the result by uh, many people here. And in this side, instead, you can basically provide a solution to this Pan-Levé equation here in terms of an expect a spectral determinant or a, a matrix model, and this you can do it very explicitly. Now, in this, in this particular case, this solution is the one that was proposed by Tsamologikov. Okay. But in principle, you can do it also for the other, uh, other Pan-Levé equation. Okay, um, here now, just to uh, summarize and conclude. Um, so, we have a new relation. We have presented a new um, and exact testable duality which relate topological string or enumerative geometry, and uh, spectral theory, operator theory, or matrix model in the other side. And then I show you that there are two ways in which we can compute this uh, four-dimensional limit. In one way, you recover the standard, uh, in the standard limit, in some sense, you recover the necklace of Shatashvili conjecture in four dimension. In the other limit, instead, you obtain a new formulation of cyber witten theory in terms of an ideal Fermi gas, and you make contact with pan levy equation. So this allowed you to give a proof of this conjecture in this particular uh, limit, and also it gave a new meaning to this uh, relatively famous O2 uh, matrix model, which was describing easing and polymers model. And this gives you the cyber, the partition function of the necklace of partition function in the in the magnetic frame, which we can write uh, in a compact way as a matrix uh, model. Now, here are some uh, open problems. Okay, that may be interesting to look at. So the first one is uh, okay. Now we have like really a lot of tests of this duality, but we still don't have a proof of this, so it would be nice if somehow we can translate this, uh, this proof that we have in, uh, in four dimension to the full, uh, full five-dimensional case. But this is not clear whether you can do it or not, or, but okay. And, and another point is that the topological string uh, spectral theory duality here was generalized to the open sector of topological string. So it may be interesting to study the 4D counterpart of this uh, generalization to see what you obtain. And then another point is that so far we always focus on SU2 gauge theory, where we have basically the solution of Lee Savian collaborator. 
and it would be uh, interesting to see what happens when you take uh, this limit of the SUN geometry in general for n. It's bigger than two. Okay. Got it. Okay.